Hello and welcome to another episode of Fellowship in Essential Oils. This week, myself and the beautiful Liz are exploring Palma Rosa. How are you this week, Liz? I am so excited for this week. We've sat on this for two weeks and nothing happened the first week. And then the second week, I had so much information. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. So we do apologize to those loyal listeners that listen to us every week, but we both need the week off. But it looks like everything happened for a reason. So you're going to get spoiled today. So we're looking mm-hmm. at Palm Arosa. Now, a little bit of history on what on earth is Palm Arosa. It's a grass. It's related to citronella and lemongrass. I was looking at where its name actually comes from, and it is native to India. And basically, it's a grass that grows um, underneath palms in India, typically, and it smells like rose. And as we know, unfortunately, the adulteration of essential oils, especially expensive or rare essential oils, is a problem around the world. And we have to be really careful when we're buying our essential oils. And good old Palma Rosa is often used to dilute rose essential oil because of its kind of likeness in smell, um, mainly because of the uh, the geranol in it. Now, today, we're not going to look at how it's a a worthy substitute of rose because we both believe that Palma Rosa stands on its own as an essential oil. So that's what we're going to dive into. So uh, you're waving your stick around there. Are you inhaling Palma Rosa at the moment, eh, Liz? I am. I'm breathing it in because I just feel that actually I'm really quite anxious about this uh, this one today because I've got so much to say so I thought well this is what's great for anxiety let's <laughs> let's use it girl <laughs> yeah definitely so I, have a, I have a question for you before we begin of course so I never asked you this at the time why did you pick Palmarosa it was to do with astrological things that have been happening in the start of April so we had our full moon in Libra which for me is the um Each zodiac sign governs a different aspect of our lives. And Libra obviously governs relationships and love. So I often in my teachings are telling people, you know, don't every full moon go, can I have a partner this month? Can I have a partner this month? Can I have a partner this month? We want to balance kind of life. And so Libra is the best moon of the year to go, okay, let's look at not just loving relationships, but all relationships as well. Plus a little asteroid called Cupido, named after Cupid the Roman god of love and Venus's son, um, also went into retrograde the day after the full moon. And that's when we tend to, Cupid governs what we find attractive in people. And when he goes into retrograde, what tends to happen is he takes his energy away and we don't find people as attractive as before. And it kind of gives us this opportunity and this lesson to go, what do I truly want in love? Now, for me, Palmarosa is very much to do with um, I, you know, I look at lemongrass as my sword of light because you kind of think of those blades of grass being like a sword. And palmarosa for me has always been my sword of love. So it's one key oil that I really love when it comes to love and we'll expand on that throughout the episode today. But that's why it was kind of astrologically we were focusing on love. So that's why palmarosa popped up. Mm. So I haven't told Andrew any of this. I just told him I'd had to download. So this is all new to everybody. So last week, I don't know if many of you know that I work for um, a company in Miami writing lots of uh, content for them. And they asked me to write about essential oils for mosquitoes. And the best oils for uh, insect repellents are grasses. Um, mm. and, the, and what's interesting, I think, about that is that the grasses are not insect pollinated, um, so they have no. So, so they've got no interest in getting uh, insects at all. So they're all repellent. And what the grasses are really good at is what we call phytoremediation. That is, they draw up stuff from the ground, whether that be chemicals or hard metals, or in the case of vetiver, even um, nuclear waste from the the ground, and they clean it. Um, and so interesting that the grasses are all under the ground so that was kind of where I was going with this I was thinking no not really got that much to say about it insect repellents what have you so many of you will know by now that I am a Melissa and so I work with the bees to ask them for help and uh, I went to sleep I don't know I suppose 10 days ago now and said I need help with and I didn't say I said I need help with knowing how to promote my mastery and mystery weekend and it's only sort of dawned on me over the last few days that that's what I am. But anyway, so I had this incredible dream. 
and this huge spirit, this huge plant being visited me. And I knew that it was Palmarosa. So I never asked her name. I just knew that she was Palmarosa. And she was absolutely enormous. And what she told me was the interesting thing about her oil is that over the next few years, she's going to become extremely important for, for um, psychoneuroimmunology. Now, my specialist area is psychoneuroendocrinology. In other words, how the thoughts affect hormones. So how does stress affect hormones? So I, I don't really venture into immunology at all, but the same sort of thing. How do thoughts affect what's going to happen in your body in terms of inflammation, that sort of stuff? And what she said to me was that um, she, she smells like a heart medicine, but mm. actually she's an anti antimicrobial. She's actually anti-inflammatory. She actually protects your heart. She actually does all of these, like kills um, biology within the body. So like E. coli staph infections all of that stuff so in effect really although she's a bottle that smells like rose she's kind of a tea tree isn't she that's that's how she acts well that, that that's immunology isn't it so i was really quite blown away by that and but what i was really like fixated on in the dream i can remember was you're so tall and i was like and actually you probably don't know this because uh, you only see me on the screen but i am very short I'm very, I'm like only just over five foot. To so spend my life talking to people and uh, like looking up, I was aware that I really had to look up and I was fixated on how do I say, you know, you're so tall without being offensive. So in the end, I said, look, you know, it's a long way up to you. Just how tall are you? And she said, I'm just under 10 foot. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Anyway, when I was reading up about, Palmarosa the next day. How tall do you think a Palmarosa grass grows? I was, it's one of the little things that I have in my head that it is 10 foot. Yeah. It's nine foot. Yeah, average nine, nine foot. foot. Yeah. I never knew that. I was expecting it to be this small. A thing. low grass, yeah. So then I was like, oh, I've got to go back because what was I talking to Palmarosa? I know she was Palmarosa, but I get the impression that it, that wasn't her name. So I'm not going to tell you her name. The name will definitely come up organically as we talk through. Mm -hmm. But her name was a different name. So that is about my download, this sort of need for investing in one's thoughts to protect oneself uh, and one's immunology. Um, but I will also want you to go off on a different thread because I think it's really important that after everybody seemed really galvanised by our last um, uh, video, about menopause, we talked about the menopause study. I found another really interesting menopause study where Palmarosa features. And this one was about brain waves. So I didn't know this, but middle-aged women, I'm sure every bloke could go, obviously, middle-aged women's brains work differently. <laughs> but actually, when you, when you actually have like an EEG, you can actually see it. Now, I have to say, when I went through menopause, I didn't have that many hot flushes. I did have a few, did have a bit, but I, I did have a bit of anxiety, not huge amounts. Very angry. I was very angry a lot of the time. And I also had horrific brain fog. Now, as I will tell you, I still need reminding of a lot of things as I go. That, that hasn't completely repaired myself, but it, it is a lot better than it was. But this can be seen apparently on an EEG. So what they were saying in this study was, well, we've worked with, uh, with uh, estrogen and that helps some women, but it's not helping every woman. So we want to tap into this oxytocin thing with the uh, sniffing essential oils. And let's see what that looks like on a brain scan. So there was lots of different oils in it. Um, and I won't go into the different ones, but what I will do is, uh, Adam and I will put it in the comments. We'll put a link to the um, study so you can see it in the comments, not in the description, in the actual comments. Um, but what it showed was women who are menopausal or perimenopausal have a, a dominant alpha wave. In other words, they don't find it very easy to relax. 
and they're very stressy and there's this feeling of foreboding all of the time. And is this biological change on the alpha wave? So there were different things that different essential oils did. And like I said, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of saying what different things did. But the Palmarosa had a strong effect on what they called negative valency. So negative valency was the feelings, basically. So they saw the alpha waves change. And as the alpha waves changed, the women reported that I don't feel so stressed but I don't feel like bad things are going to happen. I'm not so angry. I'm not ready to rip everybody's head off. And they were able to prove from the EEG that it was the Palmarosa that had done it. So I think this is really interesting. Um, and that's what I kind of wanted to bring to the table after all the work, because we, we definitely use Palmarosa for skincare, for aches and pains and all of that stuff. But let's be honest, we'll be kind of ahead of that game now, aren't we? We, we mm. want to move back. Uh, past that so yeah this idea of really helping hormones and really helping uh, immunology and th they were able to prove in a different study that geraniol for example uh, inhalation of geraniol can even uh, prevent tumor formation so this is really powerful medicine i think well, this is the interesting thing about, you know, talking about immunology, which is obviously our protection from things that would eat at us or would attack us in that type of way. And, you know, palmarosa have been used for centuries. It would often be grown near grain stores or bean stores to kind of stop insects getting at it as well. So whether we're looking yeah. at protecting us from, you know, bacteria or insects or all these different things or on an energy level, again, that sword kind of energy of it's a protector. And a phrase that was kind of echoing in my mind today as I kind of, you know, was preparing for uh, today's episode was love will always win. And Palmarosa brings in this loving, and you've talked about heart, and I would definitely say it's a heart oil as well, of it helps on an energetic level, but so on a physical level as well, of just love will, you know, you hear stories of people with cancers and different things and focusing on the love and the joy and the healing and, you know, Palmarosa kind of comes in on a physical level, but this is what I find so amazing about all essential oils is when you understand the physical, it, it opens the gateway to the, the higher realms of how it works as well. There's always that echoing. Yeah, you can, go, you can go so, so deep, can't you? But in the end, you kind of end up with like, so I would use it for, oh yeah, I got that in the first textbook. Do you know what I mean? You, get, you, 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 yeah. you go over and over and it's just, more and more tendrils of why that was such good wisdom 2,000, 4,000 years ago. Yeah. But what you're saying, obviously, about middle-aged women and, and going through menopause and stress and that type of thing, of course, Palma Rose is renowned for helping anyone who's just feeling a bit downtrodden, overwhelmed, um, anxious, depressed, any of those types of things, which I don't think that's middle-aged women. I think that's everyone feels a little bit overwhelmed yeah. at the moment kind of thing yeah. um and you know i remember seeing a meme on social media recently where, which said do you remember when good things used to happen can we go back to those oh. times oh. <laughs> and that was kind of sad it's been a challenging few that years is sad. gosh good things happen all the time to me they do they do and i think palmer is a kind of it kind of brings us back into that. And that's where when, when it comes to emotional healing, I really lean into Palmarosa as that warrior of love oil. You know, we go through relationships in our lives and we can sometimes, they don't end well or we get stung and that kind of thing. And as we get older, maybe we, some people get a bit jaded or a bit like they give up on love. And Palmarosa is that oil that really steps in and goes, no, just because it didn't work out last time, that's just getting you one step closer to greater love and don't give up. So it's I a great one that. for heartbreak. It's a great one have for you, heartbreak in that. Have you seen my cards for, for Palmarosa? I've, well, I have your deck. I definitely do. Um, I, it's been, Can I sing it? Please do, um, yeah. I, I, I am not the drawer. My, my yeah. drawing is horrific, I have to say, but I always say that one has got, a sword I call it I call it the sword of St Michael uh, the Archangel Michael and I always say yeah armor race is very good at cutting the ties the ones that keep you back and you're like <sighs> we've all got that one love that we keep thinking back to whether they're toxic or what have you or you know and you know that they shouldn't be in your head but they are you know 
and but yeah. that beautiful sort of right cut it yes yes that and that was something that, cut it move on yeah that, that was something i've got to, it, it we talk about in our book is that we talk about that often we have these ideal idealized ideas of love or we will romanticize for someone you know whether it be a celebrity or you know we kind of see love as being perfect and i want that perfect love and palma rosa i think she's a bit of a realist she's like no cut the crap don't you know don't don't wait for idealistic not realistic kind of things but also don't get caught up in the rubbish of it love is love and let's see it as a reality type of thing um so i, I think she's like really good for that now i feel like i want to cry because when i when i was like picking up her energy i was like she's not she doesn't feel like I've always said that she was probably Venus because she's like this loving era, but she's not yeah. romantic in any way, put a shape or form. She's so pragmatic. And I kind of got this feeling of this incredibly sensible, kind of like woman, not old, you know, actually not mm. that pretty, not that pretty at all, I've got to say. Fantastic, like up and down figure, but not that pretty in the face. But she was very much like very sensible about, uh, you know, and this idea of looking after yourself just make sensible decisions you know get your feet on mm. the ground get your roots down into the soil you know really pragmatic that was exactly the feeling i had that she wasn't like airy fairy and dreamy yeah no no she i think she'd be a really nice pairing for um you know i think it, with the floral oils because the floral oils can be a little bit kind of gentle and and it's all perfect whereas she's a bit like it's perfect but sometimes like like we know, a perfect relationship. Sometimes we have to fight for it. Sometimes there's some messy bits. And I guess she comes in and she's, she's I guess, the realist of love in that way. I mean, I, I have to say maybe she's, uh, I'm speaking on her behalf now because I'm very much that kind of person that I go, you know, so many, I see so many women who chase the Cinderella and you're like, mm. that, that, that doesn't, that's not what real life looks like. You know, you're screwing your life up by throwing things away because, you hit a hump in the road, you know? It's got to be worked at and it's got to be regular and it's got to be paid attention to, you know? And, and I think that that is, you're quite right. It's not that it's not the flowers, but you can imagine how, and you can imagine how Rose would, would like accommodate that in her medicine, you know? She is, she does as alterate Rose and you can imagine like Rose going, well, all right, we're after the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I know one thing that kind of comes up, a lot of people do ask, well, okay, well, how should I use this essential oil? So we, we have talked, you know, one thing I guess we should touch on very briefly for those that aren't that familiar with Palma Rosa is it is renowned for being a great essential oil for the skin. So adding a drop to moisturizers, great for the hands. You know, a lot of people, we, we worry about the face and the neck and the decolletage, but our hands are out there either working or typing and all that type of thing. A drop with your, your hand lotion can re be really beautiful as well. Um, aromatically dressing, which is a, a term that kind of is used a lot by um, my co-author of Gifts of Essential Oils, Vanessa Jean, which is anointing the whole body in essential oils. And Palma Rosa is renowned for in winter, especially, you know, we tend to, we, we lock ourselves inside and we turn on the heater and that, whether it be heating or air conditioning, that dries out the skin. And that's when I used to teach skincare to teenagers, I used to say dry skin equals one thing, wrinkles. So we don't want that. So Palma Rose is great for that. But even um, I think beautiful because of her antimicrobial and antibacterial act, um, properties, pop a couple of drops in a foot bath and sit there as well, especially if you've got any issues with your feet. So she's really, she, she kind of does help to beautify you in, a, in some kind of way. So that is a real practical kind of way. You know, yeah, then and I, I, would, I would agree with that. And I would say also like, from the from the immunology point of view and the skin eczema in particular really responds well so and as you say hand creams so i see a lot of ladies who there's lots of reports in england i don't know if you've seen it about the allergic reactions to the acetones on gel uh, gel things ah. a lot of um the manicurists that's the word i'm looking for um, are really struggling because of the fumes coming off it as it dries. And I find Palma Rosa really good with some marigold in a, um, in a cream for those ladies. Um, yeah. And But also I think that 
there's kind of a, a bit of a, a strange undercurrent. You know, when you read things like the body heals the mind and stuff like that, there, there's like this general feeling of people who have eczema sometimes have this sense of I'm a bit flaky, you know, I'm a bit... Uh, people aren't going to like me and you know they're not very confident in their own skin and the fact that they're all they're covered in like skin issues really perpetuates the problem and then the, th the thoughts do that as well and I think that you know Palmarosa is really good for those people of kind of just a bit of self-love for my skin but then you've got the antibacterial of any kind of like infection that's causing flare-ups and stuff I definitely think that's a great way to use Palmarosa. Yeah. Well, one thing you, you probably wouldn't know about me, Liz, that we haven't discussed, but, you know, eight years ago before I actually started using essential oils like I do now, I used to be covered in eczema. So it, from head to foot, you would have watched – eight years ago, this would have been the Adam Scratching show. Um, yeah. It was bright red. I love my eyes. That little kids would ask their mother why I was wearing eyeshadow. And it is. Oh. What I found is it was about switching to proper essential oils, natural products, but a lot of the time people were worrying about just the skin and it is, you know, it was stress. It was digestion. It was those things about what we're putting out in the world and feeling unconfident about that and working with, again, that holistic aspect and, and Palmer Rosa would be a really great one to complement that as well. Mm. Mm, mm. So would you definitely say, she, would you say she's a heart chakra oil? Yes. Yeah. And root. Okay. Yep. Kind of that realistic. She's a bit, she's like realistic love. Yeah. Is that where yeah, you're going? I do think yeah. That, but, but also, but also I kind of think not so much just about the love side of things. I think about the foundations of one's life, you know, putting those in place of just being like, not always chasing after everybody else's dreams and stuff, but just like, uh, this is me. And so that I think for things like uh, we talked about menopause early, but I'm talking like eczema, but like anxiety, all of those things requires a movement to say, I'm going to stop for five minutes. I'm just going to center myself. I'm just going to think about me. And I think from that point of view, we are talking about heart from self, uh, self love, but also this is my survival, my coping mechanism that, this is how I need to look after myself to thrive now, to, to be, to get my roots down in the soil. Very much so. Yeah. And I guess, you know, we, we there's a lot of um, concern with, with younger people, but I think it happens with all generations where we look on social media and there's that self comparison. Now, often the focus is on, you know, how I'm competing with other people, but you could also, you know, we often couple what happens behind closed doors with couples and what we see in public or on social media Everyone looks like they're having a great time because no one actually puts on social media. Here's me and my partner throwing things at each other because we're furious at each other. So it could, you know, we could even lean into Palmarosa on that way of if, you know, again, that realistic aspect of love and, and don't compare your other people's highlight reels of their romantic life to your reality or and make sure that you're, what you're expecting in love, whether you're single or in a relationship, is kind of realistic. So really good in that way. Yeah, and, and I, I think, you know, I, I think most of our viewers are probably old enough to have cottoned on to this anyway. But in case we're talking to somebody younger, these, these trials of relationships are what make the relationship stronger, aren't they? Mm. But doesn't mean to say they're enjoyable when you're going through them at all. No. They really hurt. They're really upsetting and they really make you question everything about yourself. So having like tools that you can fall back on, of course, friends to talk to and all of that stuff, but that quiet time where you just have to remind yourself this too shall pass. And I think it's really helpful for that. Very much so. And I, you know, I still live with a lot of people that I still talk to are doing a lot of things like online dating. And one of the challenges is online dating has opened up a bigger pond of people that you can have access to. And so yeah. people, people are a lot more flippant of like, well, if this one doesn't work, there's a thousand more people within a 10 kilometer radius that I could possibly try. So they don't try the, no, you know, oh, you, I don't like your shoes. You're gone. That type of thing as well. But I'm so glad I'm not in that generation. I mean, it must be so upsetting 
to be judged on one picture. I don't even know if you swipe white or swipe <laughs> which, one do you do? which one do you do? <laughs> Thank white, God, swipe right, kind of one swipe anyway. right if you like them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't yeah. even know. Uh, my, my kids will vote because I've got like two much older kids who are nearly 30 and, and, the, and the young one. My older ones are like, well, I'm going on a team today. Is it that person? No, no, no. They've gone up. Oh. Oh, can't keep up. I just don't think I could. I don't. So, mm. yeah, my sympathies to all of you out there. She is going to help, I think. <laughs> yeah, lean, lean into it to get clear on, on what you want and to stand into that and not to buy into the, um, the hype of it all, I guess. You'd be really good in that way as well. One other chakra I do want to talk about. So there's the seven main chakras, but as, you know, the idea of since the new age in the 1970s, we started to become a bit more sensitive to other energies. Um, and this may have been, you know, that they were in touch with these in times like Atlantis and Lemuria, and even maybe some of, the, you know, the other ancient civilizations like the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, and so on, also may have noticed these energies, but more subtle energies. And so there's been a discovery or a rediscovery of different chakras. So there is our heart chakra. Now, our heart chakra is whether I give and, and feel that I give enough love and receive enough love from this relationship or that relationship, and it can even go not just love but in value. Is there value in this relationship? Then there's considered to be the higher heart chakra or sometimes called the thyme of chakra. Now, this resonates more with a, a, a turquoise colour or kind of merging between the green of the heart and the blue of the throat, and this is to do with how we feel about humanity overall. Do we feel that they are a scourge on the earth and parasites just, you know, destroying the planet? Or do we see that everyone is giving their best and trying their best and see the beauty in humanity and the triumphs and the victories throughout the trials and tribulations? And so the higher heart chakra allows us to open our heart to being more compassionate, being more kind, being more forgiving, being more open-minded, being more accepting, and these types of things. And palm rosa for me is one of the few oils, I think kind of, you know, it, it's, I, I remember um, in, in your mother's book, Liz, she talks about this oil will, will be bigger in, in future decades. And I kind of feel that palm rosa might Did be one of these. That? Pardon? Did she she, say, I think, I've got the old not, not in front of me here. That's not a, not so, for palm rosa, but for hyssop, I think she said that. Yes, she does say hyssop. I do have the yes. old one in front of me here. Yes, go on. Yeah, no, I just remember, the, and this idea that, okay, well, different, I, I know different crystals were discovered at different times that kind of seemed relevant to hum, humanity's evolution. And I think palm rosa could be coming into her own a bit more now for the different things that we need to um, when, when times are challenging like they are, whether it be financially or, or, or you know, countries not being in, in alignment or divisions of people, that we love will always win. And, and to lean into that love and to have faith in love and to fight for love in that way. And I think Palm Rosa could really help us to, you know, just be a bit more kind and realise I don't think there's, a, there's many people out there that are not doing their best with the information they have and what they believe is right. Now, sometimes we wonder what on earth politicians or celebrities or a different country is doing. We're like, are they stupid? But at the end of the day, we're all doing our best. And if we can show that compassion, and I think Palm Rosa can help us with that, then maybe, you know, we know when we show compassion to people, they're a lot more open to our way of thinking. Arguing never gets us anywhere. So I think she's beautiful on that higher heart chakra as well. How do we access that? So obviously we use the oil, but where are we looking on the body to focus? We would look more kind of, it would be kind of where the clavicles, where the collarbones kind of come together and just below that. I think it's the. I can feel the, it actually. Now you've said you, that. You kind of yeah. It, it it kind of whereas the heart kind of is about. If I'm thinking about a heart chakra energy, I'm kind of thinking about like I'm dealing with you, Liz. So it's going between you and I type of thing. Whereas the higher heart kind of glows out to the world and it's got to reach around the world. So it kind of projects from that bit of almost where the chest tilts a little bit up rather than straight ahead in that way. So it's a really nice one to you know. Popping the essential oil on there, inhaling it. I always say get it, you know, in you, on you, around you, what, however it works, as long as you're dancing with it. But it's a really nice one to anoint over that higher heart chakra when we need to show a bit more kindness and compassion to other people and to ourselves as well. I, I mean, I've been working with rose rather than palma rosa, so this is rose talking now. Mm. Because I've got to do a lecture, uh, two lectures, I've got to do one in Transylvania, it's a place, uh, and... Um, <laughs> 
and also in the state um, about Rose. And some of the stuff that's been coming through from Rose is very much about listening. And some, I read something the other day and I was like, oh, that's such a Rose thing to say, that um, we, we, these days we listen to reply. We don't mm. listen to understand. And I do think that that, you know, that that's a rose medicine, but I think that that also works on this, uh, this, what do we call it? This higher heart chakra. Higher heart. That, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that seems to resonate there to me that it's not listening to reply. It's listening to understand. Yeah, very much so. I've just realized that the sunset as we've been talking and I'm getting darker and darker and I look, you like, are I'm, many dogs. <laughs> I, I look like I'm in a witness yeah. protection scheme. Now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I might, I might hit a, you, you keep talking for two seconds and I'm going to turn on the light so, I, so people remember oh, what no I was like. Stress. No stress at all. Well, when he comes back, I'm going to grill him about what he thinks. That was quick. There we go. I was going to say, I'm going to grill you. I was waiting for you to ask about medical astrology. But before you do that, I'm going to ask you, is there a crystal that um, resonates similarly to this? The crystal that I pair with Palma Rosa is Alexandrite. Now, Alexandrite, I don't know if you're familiar with this crystal. It's a fascinating crystal because in daylight, under sunlight, it looks green. But if you put it under candlelight or uh, at night, it looks red or pink. And it's actually called Emerald by Day, Ruby by Night. And it was named after um, Alexander the Great and was discovered in, um, you know, it's a, a, quite a rare crystal and amazing. You can get it faceted. If you Google Alexandrite, you'll often see the crystal shown in two different, it looks like two different crystals as long as been photoshopping and that kind of thing. Alexandrite obviously is very much about, you know, looking at the flip side when it comes to love, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to, you know, that type of thing. And when we think our heart does have two sides, can we look from the other side and that type of thing? So it's a really beautiful one and very regal. So kind of with your Alexandrite, you know, kind of crystal and that kind of sword of love, Palm Rosa, you, you kind of feel that you're really equipped to, to fight for love, which I which is my theme for Palm Rosa. There's no way my sister hasn't got that stashed in a chest. She's as much as a crystal addict as you are. I shall be saying to her, right, show me that. I've never seen that. <laughs> yes, a bit of a rare one, but it's a good one to have in the collection. So I want to talk about the medical astrology. What yeah. are you thinking? What are you for thinking? me? For me, she, you know, there are other lots of um, when it comes to astrology, there are lots of asteroids and different things that are to do with love. But I'm still going to put Palmarosa with Venus um, and with with Libra as that relationship kind of oil. That's that's where I lean with her. So when I asked her her name. She told mm -hmm. me the name of our, uh, a goddess I know well, but also she's an asteroid. So I'm going to put it out there and put you on the spot and say, what do you know about Hygieia? Hygieia, the, uh, the goddess of hygiene and good health. Um, I, I don't know. She hasn't been an asteroid and a goddess that's really resonated with me a lot. And I love my asteroids. I actually do asteroid readings for people um, as part of my services. Um, She's not one that I'm really, she hasn't rocked my world, which is interesting considering, I mean, you know, I, I have such an interest in health, but yeah. What, what can you share about her? And not a huge right. amount. Oh, not much. Know. Yeah. But no, but I, I can a bit, so I can tell you sort of the background from a Melissa point of view. What I can say from an astrological point of view is she is preventative medicine. Oddly. Ah. And so that's fascinating that that's come up, isn't it? And, um, so I've only read like a, a few sort of bits on the internet and stuff just to be ready to talk really, but I shall be going deep, much deeper with her. But um, basically how she turns up in your chart, depending on what house she turns up in, is to do with the way that you protect your health and mm. your sort of strange little foibles of like routines to, to, uh, to look after yourself. Um, and so... When we say prevent preventative medicine, we don't necessarily mean aromatherapy as such, but in terms of how well you feed yourself, drinking enough water, all of that really sensible stuff. You know, we were talking about, uh, you know, pragmatic. That, that's why I started to like feel, oh, that's exactly what I could pick up, you know, that she was really sensible. That, right, this is what you do to look after yourself each day. And from an astrological perspective, 
quite similar to what you said about um, people always trying their best and like different governments, different leaders and whatever, they might have very odd opinions on what's right and what's wrong. Welcome to England, people. But, <laughs> but um, you know, they, they are being guided by what they feel is, is correct. Well, in the same way, preventative medicine and medicine generally changes over time, doesn't it? You know, it's mm. very much affected by the movements of, of, of time, you know. And so very interesting that this huge goddess has appeared to me at this time, really. Um, but historically as well, she, Hygieia was the the daughter of Asclepius. Asclepius is uh, the god of medicine, obviously, in uh, ancient Greece. So he had five different uh, daughters, and you're quite right, she was a uh, goddess of hygiene, but also um, daily care of oneself. But they are connected to the Melissa, which is very odd, because the Melissa were the priestesses that um, oversaw the mysteries of Eleusis. And they work, we work with the energy, but also serpent and spider. Now, I haven't gone spider at all. I've done a little bit of serpent energy working with, uh, with Cyprus. But when you see pictures of Hygieia, she has the Cyprus, she has the serpent with her. We know that they are connected historically. It's written in lots of places. So the, as I say, the Melissae were the priestesses who presided over the mysteries of Eleusis, um, which were the which is a, a huge um, initiation ceremony um, that was designed to, that it, it said, we don't know what happened, but it was said that it gave you a better uh, life in this life and a, a better experience of the next. Well, that kind of does talk to many different things, doesn't it? But in particular, it does speak to, pre to preventative medicine. But um, we know that the Mysteries of Eleusis was a, a nine day festival. And there was lots of interesting things that happened on each day. My favorite was on the second day where everybody had to take their mystic pig in the sea and bathe the mystic pig. <laughs> and like apparently um, sharks came uh, after the blood of these mystic pigs and somebody actually got killed by a shark. Once. So the mystic pig stories are really funny. I'm sure that if you're an ancient Greek, you didn't find them funny, but I find them funny. But, um, and then, <laughs> and then the day after, we think, we think either the fourth or fifth day, they were joined by the priesthood of Asclepius and Hygieia. And that the whole community of, and, and by this, as I say, we're talking 3,000 people each year dreamt together to get insights into what's going on in their lives and what they can do to help um, their lives. And Asclepius and Hygieia also had their own sanctuaries where you dreamt with snakes. Snakes would be crawling around you as you slept. How you slept? I have no idea. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I do know a bit about her. And the fact that she turned up in a dream is exactly right. That is how she would turn up. And so now I'm like, where do I go with this? Where do I go with this? Yeah. Mm. And, and, and I guess one kind of thing to summarize for people that maybe are new to Palmarosa, the, the use of the daily use of Palmarosa in that sometimes you know self care and self discipline are forms of self love. Like self love doesn't mean going and spending a fortune or or, or you know going and getting those manicures or massages once a month. It's those daily things like drinking water, having a skincare routine, taking your makeup off at night, all those types of things. That that dealing daily with the letter, dealing with the yeah dealing with the letter care. that like on your desk about the money that you haven't paid, dealing with that oh, deadline. Yes. So it's getting nose, getting nose off the list, they're what help you relax. So yeah. uh, whilst we do live in a time of like self-love is about candles around the bath and stuff like that, it is, but it's not really. <laughs> it's about protecting yourself from the things that really make you upset. Yeah. And that's, you know, an ins it's insulation, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Now, obviously, you had massive downloads, and I can I can hear the cogs 
you know, churning in your brain all the way here in Australia right now. Um, do, is there, do you think there's a way we're going to do a bit of shameless self-promotion to wrap up the show tonight? Is there yeah, anything yeah. you were kind of thinking that you wanted to share with everyone? I'm just exploding with it for money. On one hand, I'm so excited. On the other, I'm like, I'm supposed to be writing a book about her. I'm supposed to be doing all of these different things. And so I thought, you know what? I know what we can do. We can use what I learned about from the temples of Asclepius. And so um, I've, I've done another video, which if you go to my link tree, you'll be able to click the link and go, right, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to hijack it. But basically, I'm going to put together an evening, which will be, I can't remember the date now, it's the Saturday 22nd of April, where you can come and join me and do some of the um, the work that was done in the temples. Um, obviously, they didn't do it with essential oils. They did it with dream weaving, but we can do it with uh, essential oil uh, weaving and uh, do some of the movement practices that are to do with the serpent to see if we can draw down more information. So if you go to my link tree, I'll put it right at the top for you to click on. Um, also, just unrelated, we were talking about menopause and I know there's lots of you who are really interested in doing menopause. And on my um, on my group, my wart cunning moon bathing and crones group, we are hosting Kathy Skipper, um, the twin, oh, I can't remember, next Thursday, whatever, this Thursday on there. Um, and she's gonna be talking about essential oils for menopause. So again, if you want to come, that's completely free click on my link tree and you'll be able to get into the chat to do that too. Promote yourself. What would now, you got to say? I'm so excited well, to hear your name. Very excited about myself and Vanessa Jean, who wrote the book Gifts of Essential Oils. Um, we are releasing, it starts in uh, early May. It's a seven month course on a certified course on spiritual aromatherapy and astrology. Now, people often ask, why do we merge these two together? Well, what I love about astrology is when we come to understand who we are and we're not just our zodiac sign or our star sign, that's kind of the black and white outline. But when we were born, Mercury was somewhere in the sky and Pluto was somewhere and Venus, and that colours us in. And I was doing a reading for someone last week who was a Cancer, and I said, I bet you don't feel like the normal Cancer. And she's like, I don't, because most of her other planets were in fire signs when she was born, and that will colour you in. So when you know who you are, and when the planets go into retrograde, and you hear about these retrogrades like Mercury retrograde and that kind of thing, they'll actually trigger off different issues which can be lessened, which can cause ascension. So that kind of gives you, when you understand that side, you have the weather forecast. Then what we need is how do we deal with the weather? That's where your essential oils come in. So in this course, we're actually going to show you how to understand your astrology and other people's, know when different things will be triggered, and then which oils are going to be best to suit you as well. So this would be great for anyone who just would like to know more about themselves, would like to know a deeper modality and how to work with essential oils, or for anyone who works in the healing modality who would actually like to offer something more and a deeper understanding to their client, it would be absolutely great for them as well. So we'll put links in, um, you know, in all the show notes and different things like that if you'd like to know more. There's lots to find out and you're more than, um, you know, I'd love you to reach out to me, ask me questions. If you want to jump on a quick Zoom call, I'm happy to chat to people as well. But we're very excited. This is something I've been squirreling away on for hundreds of hours and, you know, picking it in pieces and putting it back together and um, very excited by the group who's starting to join us from all around the world. And it will be um, in time zones, at different time zones, so that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can join in. If you miss it, you've got lifetime access to the replays as well. I, I am so pleased that you're doing this because so many people say to me, will you teach me medical astrology? And I actually can't communicate it very well. So I know that loads of my viewers will be like, well, are you going to teach it? this?" No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I've proved to you now that Adam is just as brilliant and better, I think, in terms of astrology. Than oh. me. And I... And I heartily recommend spending time with both of them they are two of my favorite people so you're too kind I thank you I, yeah yeah i do yes. I love you both dearly. so this is going to be a great opportunity for people and and i do think you're quite right medical astrology has so much to show people about themselves you know yes There's so many layers that you're, uh, that you're like 
woo. Yeah. I, I never saw that about myself. And yet, you know, if, when you can see it in a chart, it's like, that is exactly what I'm like. I don't, I, I couldn't have explained that, but that is because that mm. is there. Odd. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and the great thing about doing it in 2023, people have asked, will you do it again? And we're like, we're not sure. It just seemed to line up, as you, people may have seen on social media and different articles, all the planets are direct right now. And we've actually done the course. We're not going to kind of go, you know, like Mercury, then Venus and Mars, the logical way, because they all kind of planets go retrograde, which will be when those lessons get triggered. Perfect, kind of really nicely lined out throughout the next seven months. So not only will you be learning the theory, but guess what? You're going to get the life experience of what happens when Pluto goes retrograde and when, you know, Neptune goes retrograde and all these different things. You'll be able to grab the oils that are going to help you. It's going to be, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to sharing it, but also having people share back what they're actually experiencing in real life around the world. Yeah, and I I really want to sort of stress a different element that I think I, I know that you guys who do like network marketing and stuff really experience this, but we don't necessarily have it so much in aromatherapy, and this is part of the reason why I want to do the the Palmarosa group with other people. Mm. That there's such a big benefit of having a mirror with other people to bounce off. You know, you can study all you like in the aromatherapy diploma, and you know, and but you will only get a one multifaceted, like one-sided um, set of, of of learning coming through. And like, I would never have had this access to Palmarosa had Adam not sort of said to me, "This is what we're going to do," because it's not one of my oils. I didn't never gone there. And so it's really good to have, to expose yourself to other people who are doing the same amount of work and, and really be in that like vibration, that frequency to, to perpetuate what you're doing, you know? I'm Very much. And I'm, not, uh, and I'm not sure if we, we said it um, after we finished recording one of our episodes or not, but neither me or Liz and what we say in these from the more um, esoteric or spiritual perspectives are right. You know, we disagree no, on chakras, no. we disagree on things. But what we, what, we, what we both encourage, and I know you agree with me, we've talked about this, Liz, is that we encourage people to try different people, find out what resonates, because at the end you will find your truth, because there isn't one truth. You're not going to find the person who knows it all. And if you find someone who knows it all, that's a red flag. So we, we, that's why we encourage you to, you know, we, we come from different worlds and different backgrounds and how we've learned about essential oils. And some of what Liz says you'll love and some will, will not resonate and the same with me. And that's what we encourage is for you to find what's going to work for you because we are all different souls with different energies and different truths. Just lenses, aren't they? That's all we're looking through, different lenses all the time. Exactly. So I, I, I got you deep into Palma Rosa so because it was I my know. choice last episode. So now you're going to well, grab your to, deck. I'm going to do the cards for you again because that, ooh, that worked out well for me last time, I think. It did. I what will it be? Oh, by, the way, uh, by the way, I have ordered some Hawaiian sandalwood. Ah, it's Miliahi. Beautiful. <laughs> we, we did a good job. I'm going, to, I'm going to see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. Right. So when? Oh. No, I'm not a good enough shuffler for you to do a <laughs> The pressure. Okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> my son's a magician. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, my yeah. middle son. He's a computer software engineer, and he got himself through university by being doing the magic at the at the university balls. So wow! I, 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 good I, on him. So in our family, we go. You'd get you get shot in the wild west for that one. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, terrible! <laughs> shuffler, I think. Please uh, stop, sorry. <laughs> you got me in conversation. Juniper. Oh, yes. Very yes. nice. Juniper, purification. Do you know what? I know very little about the spiritual aspects of juniper. I need to get off my ass and do some research and some thinking. In my opinion, juniper berry is, it is the best oil for empaths. So we'll dive deep into that next week. Mm, I shall be pleased to know about that. Right then, same time, same place next week. Say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us on Fellowship of Essential Oils. Remember that when you rate us, when you leave reviews and when you share it, we allow other people to experience the magic of essential oils in the plant kingdom as well. So please do that. 
And every time you actually give us a five-star rating, a fairy gets its wings and a unicorn gets its horn. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but also, I feel really happy. So please do write things. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you see next you week. All soon. Bye.